Nice. Yeah, put it on, right? The year he was elected was the warmest on record. But on the campaign trail, Donald Trump drew warmth instead from those he promised would be better off when he scrapped his nation's commitment to fighting climate change. We're going to cancel the Paris Climate Agreement. Even as the decision nears, those voices play loud in the debate over America's withdrawal from the Paris Accord. Mr. President, don't listen to the swamp. Keep your promise. Withdraw from the Paris Climate Treaty. For the president, America first means prioritizing American manufacturing and job creation, and he worries the Paris protocols get in the way. But among those appealing for the U.S. to stay in are some of America's most powerful business leaders. They're lobbying him too. President Trump needs no full-page ad to know what other world leaders think of his threat to withdraw. He alone refused to endorse the Paris Agreement at the G7 summit in Italy last week. It proves that President Trump is completely out of touch with the reality of what's happening in this country and indeed what's happening on this planet. Andrew Light helped negotiate the deal for the Obama administration. He's concerned the climate change decision is seen as a chance to reset the president's image. When he's also you know, taking a softer approach to NAFTA, he's not declaring China a currency manipulator, he's kind of back and forth on NATO, certainly out there in the world on Syria, and I think the people around him have sort of said, this is something that can rebalance your America first view, when in fact what the decision will do will make America last. It will also continue the project of undoing the work of his predecessor. The growing threat of climate change could define the contours of this century more dramatically than any other challenge. First it was Obamacare, now this. It rips a hole in the agreement widely viewed as the last best chance to avoid the catastrophic effects of a warming globe. But the dealmaker in chief never saw it that way. For him, it was a bad deal that the U.S. lost and China won. China is eating our lunch because they don't, they don't partake in all of the rules and regulations that we do. But in truth, if the U.S. walks away from the deal, it cedes leadership to China and others on climate change. These are seismic shifts that threaten to change the course of global politics. As the Chinese leader meets Angela Merkel today, there's a sense of a new reality abroad, even as President Trump crafts an alternative reality at home. And Kylie Morris joins us live now from Washington. Um, Kylie, when are we likely to know, and is it really inevitable? I don't think we're at the point of inevitability yet, John. Uh, the president has tweeted that he'll be making a decision in the next few days, but certainly there are strong indications from the White House that he is leaning toward withdrawing the U.S. from the accord. Uh, having said that, there are still meetings going on. We know that Rex Tillerson, who's the Secretary of State, who is someone who wants the U.S. to stay in the agreement, he is meeting with the president now. And, of course, you have Jared Kushner, the president's son-in-law, Ivanka Trump, both of those are on the same side as Rex Tillerson. They want uh, the Americans to stay in the deal. But then you have powerful other voices, those of, for example, Steve Bannon, the kind of anti-globalist voices who want uh, the president to follow through on the promise that he made to voters. What we certainly don't know is how any... Uh, any uh, decision to step out of the deal might take place, how long it might take. Um, you know, there are some conditions on the deal, so that all of that will have to be decided. A lot of detail still to come. Convenient diversion from the apparent chaos inside the White House. Well, there, there is chaos, certainly, but I'm not sure this makes it less chaotic. Uh, diversion might be helpful. I mean, certainly Jared Kushner, uh, there is a lot of scrutiny now of him, the son-in-law, in terms of uh, whether or not or the nature of his meetings with Russians uh, prior to the election. Uh, and certainly there, that will be revived when, as we understand it, James Comey, the FBI director, uh, gives testimony in Congress next week. So those problems aren't going to be made to go away with a, a bit of distraction. Well, earlier I spoke with Baroness Brani Worthington, a former UK government advisor on climate change, and from Washington by Bjorn Lomborg, author of The Skeptical Environmentalist. He has reservations about the Paris Accords. I began by asking how much Trump's decision mattered. Well, it's clearly significant. Um, I think we'd all prefer not to be in this position where we're having to debate whether the US is staying in or not. Um, so, yeah, it's important. And really, it'd be a great shame if he does decide to pull out of Paris. But we don't know yet what he's going to do. But so. their absence, supposing it comes to that, would that cripple Paris? No, no, I don't think it would. I think the probably one scenario we want to try and avoid is 
of Trump staying in and trying to use that uh, presence to disrupt. So a full pulling out actually might be better. Now, not for the US, but certainly better for the rest of the world to be able to get on with its agenda. Bjorn Lomborg, uh, you don't really like the Paris Accord anyway, but do you have a reaction to Trump pulling out of it? So, John, the real point here is to recognize that Paris is being sold as this sort of savior for the climate. But it really isn't. It's an incredibly expensive way to do very little good. And so if Trump were to pull out, it might actually be a blessing in disguise because it can get us to switch away from this policy that hasn't worked for the last 20 years, Kyoto, now Paris, to a policy that can actually fix climate change, which is the Energy Breakthrough Coalition and all the other things that you know, Bill Gates and many others are trying to focus on, namely in, invest a lot more in research and development into green energy to make green energy so cheap that everyone will want to buy it. Uh, I just don't think that's what's going to happen if Trump pulls out of Paris, I'm afraid. I don't think that's going to cause some sort of domino effect where the rest of the world decides, hey, we got it wrong, we'll do something different. We're talking about one man who's quite capricious deciding on, a, on whatever evidence he thinks is important to do something, which ultimately I think most of the world would agree is not the right answer for the US or for the rest of the world. So the idea that that's going to then mean the rest of the world taking stock and thinking, oh, yeah, you're right, we got it wrong. That's just not how it's going to play out. Beyond? Well, there's definitely that risk. Remember what happened with Kyoto? Everybody now agrees, oh yeah, Kyoto actually didn't do anything. So we just wasted 15 years on doing virtually nothing. And so I think there is a good argument to say, do we really want our legacy to say, so we spent another 15 years with Paris and do almost nothing? Uh, Isn't the dynamic yeah. already alive? I mean, you, you take uh, Monday a week ago when 25.4% uh, uh, of Britain's uh, electrical energy was generated by solar power. I mean, you know, something's happening. Oh, absolutely. That's Does it need happening. Paris yeah. to keep it going? Surely not. Well, the Paris is an enabling factor because it creates, as I say, that um, confidence that you're not acting alone anymore, that there's an international agreement in place so that your competitive distortions, if there are any, are minimized. And that's why Paris is significant. And also, Paris was really important because there was a business lobby there that was very vocal and now you're seeing a new breed of lobbyists coming forward who are those people who are making money whilst saving the world and that's that's a hugely important factor politicians are listening i thought you'd be happy Bjorn. and and sorry i'm i'm i'm, I'm sorry i've got to break this uh happy fest uh let's just be realistic right now the world gets about 14 percent of its energy from renewables almost all of that is from biomass burnt in the poor world. And that's been the lowest for the last 200 years. If you look at what the International Energy Agency estimates we're going to see by 2030, when Paris runs out, we might have brought that up to about 19%. So it's very easy to say, oh, there's this one afternoon where we were powered by all solar, all wind. But the problem, of course, is as long as we can't power ourselves the whole time with green energy, it doesn't really count. All it matters is it makes energy much more expensive, it reduces growth, it makes more people energy poor, and it's not a solution that's sustainable in the long run. Uh -huh. That's why we need the energy research and development. And Brian, at the end of the day, the pulling out of Trump, if he does, is that a disaster for global leadership? I, for one, think it would be a great shape for the people of America. I mean, it's a great shape for the globe because it would be nice to carry on with this unified position that was agreed in Paris. But really, it's the people of America who are now being represented by someone that I don't think has got their best interests at heart, whether it's children and air quality or investors who want to really double down on green investments and R&D. Uh, this is a signal that uh, says the US is not really on the same page as everyone else. And that's a great shame.